Hello, in this video we're going to be looking for hawfinches. We're here at Linford Arboretum, which is probably the best known site for hawfinches in East Anglia. We started off at the tunnel, as it's known. There were loads of small birds around, like this chaffinch. They were there for the seed and the bird food that had been scattered on the ground. This nut hatch was picking out a bit of fat ball. It was nice to see this male yellowhammer, not a bird I see very often. It was pecking around at the seed before stopping at the pool for a drink. And then someone gave the shout and there were some hawfinches at the top of the tree. They were in a line of trees above the tunnel area, which you could view from about 20 metres further along the path. And there at the top of the tree was the first hawfinches of the day, and Emma's first ever. You could clearly see that large powerful beak that is characteristic of this, our largest species of finch. I was able to film them at this distance and height using the pixel to pixel crop mode on my Panasonic GH6, combined with the 150 to 400 mil lens with the built in 1.25 teleconverter and the 2 times Olympus teleconverter, which with the 2 times crop factor gives me the equivalent of 3000 mm reach. We went back to the tunnel hoping for the half inches to come down. I was pleased to see some brambling, a winter visitor that like the Yellowhammer I don't see very often. This nuthatch was jumping around on the floor collecting seeds, which it took up to the tree to eat. We heard some crossbills had been seen by the paddock, but we found no sign of them when we went down there. But I did get this dunnock singing. There were also these feeders there, which initially I thought were just attracting blue tits and chaffinch. But then we spotted this marsh tit, another less common species, and a new species for Emma. We headed back to the tunnel to see if we could get the hawfinches lower down. I got some more footage of the chaffinches feeding, and this male having a bath in a pond. The brambling was still coming down too. This finch species is often found with the chaffinch locks, and they seem to be hanging out together here too. Bramblings breed in Scandinavia and Russia, but overwinter in more southern areas such as the UK, and will head back north in spring. I concentrated on filming the bramblings while we waited. Despite the sunny weather, the shade and the sun direction meant I had to push the ice up higher than ideal while filming in the tunnel. I did manage to get this chap inch in some nicer light. Then, the hawfinch landed right at the back of the tunnel. It was hopping around the floor, picking up seeds, in much the same way as its smaller finch relatives have been. I got some footage before it decided to take off and fly out of sight. While the hawfinch was distracting us, the yellowhammers had returned, and this female with the brown coloured wings was having a bath in the pool, before being joined by this more brightly coloured yellow male. Then, out of nowhere, this brambling came in and had a go at the male yellowhammer. He saw it off, and after checking the coast was clear, he went back to bathing again. He then left the female alone again, before two other yellowhammers came in to join her, before she left too. And after a short while, the other two left as well. There's a bit more nut hatch activity before the hawfinch reappeared. It was a bit closer, so I concentrated on trying to capture that mega bill in action. Hawfinches are famous for being able to crack almost any seed with that amazingly powerful bill, even cherry stones. The 
there are around 500 pairs in the UK, and sadly, the population appears to be declining. The numbers are boosted in winter, however, by birds coming in from northern Europe. They are most easily seen at their roosts at dawn and dusk, and in winter, when the lack of leaves makes this species, which tends to stay near the top of trees, easier to see. The Arboretum was now getting very busy on this sunny morning, so we decided to leave and try somewhere else. We've had quite a good morning here at Linford Arboretum. We've had marsh tits, we've had lots of brambling, and we just had the hawfinch on the ground in front of us, so yeah, can't really complain. We're now going to head off to somewhere else. We decided to come to Carlton Marshes, right on the coast of Suffolk near Lowestoft, and we're going to see what we can find here. The first thing of note was this stone chat. Well, I've just started walking down this long straight path, and there's a great white egret feeding right in the distance. A bit further along from the egret, these teal were feeding. and these black-headed gulls were having a preen. We looked out over Pito's Marsh, where the long-billed dowitcher had been reported the day before. It's an American wader that looks very much like a gobwit, and there were over a hundred gobwits on Pito's Marsh scrape. While scanning around, I found this shelled up feeding out on the water. And a small flock of starlings flew in. Some of the gobwits are feeding on the scrape. And as I got my eye in, I spotted the other wader species, such as these golden plover. And these tiny little dunlin. Then this marsh area flew in. and up went pretty much all the birds. But it wasn't long till they all settled back down on the Scrape Island. Some even went right back to feeding. The marsh area was still circling nearby, but the other birds seemed unconcerned. With no sign of the Dowitcher, we carried on walking, but the only thing of any note was this goldfinch as we walked back towards where we started. We've just come back down to nearer the centre, and we were hoping that as it got quieter, it's nearly four or five o'clock now, yep. um, we were hoping that the Chinese water deer might show a bit better. And they have. I love it when a plan comes together. There were lots of rushes in the way, but every so often one would put his head up, and you could see those fantastic tusks, which this species has instead of antlers. As you can probably guess from their name, they are native to East China, as well as Korea, and were introduced and escaped into the world of the UK in the late 19th and early 20th century. The light then got a bit darker as the cloud arrived, but I couldn't complain as it was five hours later than it had been forecast. Unsurprisingly, water deer are usually found in wetlands, in particular Fenland, and the Suffolk and Norfolk broads are a stronghold for the species, which is well adapted for transversing the damp ground and swimming across water. The deer got harder to see behind the vegetation, so we went up to a nearby raised hide. And we got lucky as one deer was right in front of the hide by the large pond. We got some much closer views, but it was still behind rushes and reeds. It was then joined by a little egret. They mostly ignored each other. And the egret got on with fishing. The water deer then came out to feed in a more open area, so I got my clearest views of the day. And then it wandered right out into the open, but with its bum to me of course.
Finally, I got a good view of it head on. As something had caught its attention. It then wandered back past the pond, where Grey Heron had joined the egret. It seemed to keep an eye on them as it got closer. And then it stopped for a wee. Which went on for a while. I managed to get all three in shot again before the deer got back to feeding. Finally, as the deer wandered in closer, I got some close up shots before it wandered off into the reeds. It was a great end to a day of good birds and good mammals. Thanks for watching.